Hey guys, I'm Mel from Fortin, and today I'm going to be going over the top reasons why you need a splitter buffer, like the Roach and the Spliff, in your pedal board. Reason number one, keying out a signal. A splitter buffer allows you to send a signal to key other pedals such as a compressor or the Zool noise gate to trigger their effects more accurately. So right now I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to use your Roach or the Spliff to send a keyed input into your Zool. So firstly, you're going to want to plug your guitar into the input of the Roach and then take one of the outputs of the Roach and then plug it into your pedal board like so. Afterwards, you're going to take one of the outputs, the remaining outputs, like output number three, and then plug that into the keyed input of the Zool. Doing this allows your Zool to trigger off of the direct signal of the Roach rather than the saturated signals of your drives or your boosters. Reason number two, preserving tone. A buffer doesn't change your guitar signal, it just provides a low impedance drive to limit high frequency roll-offs on long cable lengths. Sometimes many pedal boards or a long cable run can create signal loss. Every time you plug a cable into your pedal board, you slightly roll off the tone on your guitar and your tone can suffer. The buffer goes at the beginning and at the end of your pedal board, except for situations where you use a fuzz. The fuzzes don't sound very good with a buffer, so just put it after the fuzz and putting it before and after your pedal board should eliminate that high frequency roll off you experience with tons of cables in a pedal board setup or just a really long cable. You can test your guitar rig by plugging in your pedal board and running your guitar through the pedal board with your pedals off and then comparing your tone by strumming open chords. Then plug your guitar directly into your amp with a relatively short cable. And if the guitar signal sounds like a completely different guitar, you probably need a buffer. All right, so right now I'm gonna show you guys how to test your pedal board to see if you need a buffer in your chain. At this moment, I have my FGN guitar on the bridge pickup, single coil, with a 30-foot cable connected to my pedal board and a 12-foot cable coming out of my pedal board into my interface. At this moment, I have no plugins activated in my DAW and you will be just hearing dry guitar signal. You can do this at home with a clean setting on your amp. So on the second setting, I'm just plugging my guitar directly into my interface and you'll be hearing nothing but just the guitar. So as you guys can see, I've added the spliff to my guitar chain to accommodate for that 30 foot cable length that I have going from my guitar into my pedal board. Let's hear how it sounds. There's a small detail difference between my 30 foot cable run going into my pedal board, into my interface, versus my 12 foot cable run going directly into my interface you notice that the tone is slightly rolled off. And you can only imagine what it would be like with a larger pedal board setup and how much the tone would roll off gradually by adding more pedals to the setup. And you can hear a small detail difference by adding the buffer to the chain. And you can see that I've got some of those highs back by adding the buffer to the chain in my third example. Reason number three, recording. Using a splitter buffer allows you to record signal before and after your pedal board. When working with an engineer or producer, giving them guitar DI will allow them to properly produce and edit your guitar playing, thus allowing them to have more control and dial in your tone more extensively. Also, giving the producer the DI of the pedal board before it hits the head and cab will allow them to have a proper understanding of your tone before it saturates into the amp. This will also allow them to reamp your exact pedal board tone 
to the produced and edited guitar take. So right now I'm gonna be showing you guys an example of how to use the Roach in a recording setting. Right now I've output one of the Roach going directly into my pedal board. I've output two, splitting the signal, going directly into my interface before it hits the pedal board. And I've output three, keying the input of my Zool. So right now I'm able to record the saturated and noise gated signal from my pedal board into the DAW as well as direct signal so my producer can edit my playing as well as grid my playing. And both of these options allows the producer to understand my playing and produce my guitar tone to the most accurate representation of my pedal board. Reason number four, dual toning live. Using a splitter buffer at the end of your chain allows a player to use two amplifiers and cabs at the same time giving you two separate guitar tones at each side of the stage. If you are a singular guitarist on stage and you want to project that dual guitarist feel, the splitter buffer is the best way to achieve this wide, loud, on-stage sound. It is recommended that you have a different head and different cab on each side of the stage to achieve this wide and drastic feeling signal. Splitter buffers can even allow someone to use multiple pedal board chains in a set. Especially if you're in a studio setting as well, this is great for having preset chains and different rigs in your studio. All right, let's recap. The top reasons you need a splitter buffer are, one, for keying out your guitar signal. This allows you to trigger gates and compressors such as the Zool or even key out to tuners. Two, preserving tone to make sure your guitar tone is reflective of your actual guitar and not a rolled off signal due to long cable lengths or multiple pedals in a chain. Three, recording, giving your producer before and after DIs of your pedal board, giving the most flexible experience for your producer in the studio. And lastly, fourth, live dual guitar tone. This allows a singular guitarist to achieve a two person or two tone feel for a large tone in the live setting. All in all, I hope this video gave you guys a proper understanding and gave you guys ideas on how to use a splitter buffer like the Roach and Spliff in your pedal board. And if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up, sub to this channel, ring that bell for notifications, and let us know in the comments below if you guys have your own creative ways of using the splitter buffers like the Roach and the Spliff in your guitar chain. All right guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.